and completing this massive 57 car grid number 22 Ellie Birchenhoff number 22 completes the grid whether they are all there I doubt whether Alistair was counting them all as he went through but certainly there's a huge, huge number of them and certainly the front, front, front few rows are all there right well there's a lot of minis uh, and uh, at the moment heading into Stoke Corner and the race will be underway at the end of the race proper will be underway at the end of this lap. You can see the pace car peeling off into the pit lane. And so the blue car, Ben Daff Owens, with alongside him, Adam Morgan, who was uh, grinning all over his face yesterday after he got out of the car, having qualified second fastest, uh, and will be putting his BTCC skills and experience to good effect here now to see whether he can see off the very rapid Welsh driver, Ben Daff Owens. So here we go, they're not going to arrive at Abbey quite as soon as the Formula One cars did from the start, but here they come now, a whole pack of them. And how is it all going to unravel as they come into the corner for the first time? It's Adam Morgan in front of Endaf Owens, the red car of Endaf Owens dropping down, the blue car of Endaf Owens dropping down, and number five has gone a little bit stray, Lars Ekornes, the Norwegian driver, getting back on the track now, no damage done. They're all piling in front of you now into uh, Village. Well, there's no doubt about the leading car, and it's Nick Swift's car, driven today, of course, by Adam Morgan, number 76. Wonderful start from him. And in second place is the red car of Ian Curley. Then it's one of the two white and black cars, very similar, so we'll wait till they come alongside us and we can perhaps pick up which of the two it is. It's the 142 car, which is Chris Morgan, who's up to third place. Then it's the number three of Chris Middlehurst in fourth, and uh, then another of those white and black ones, which could be uh, either Tom Bell or Darren Turner. Right, we've just got pulling off here, Niall McFadden in the number 66 car. The Irishman, uh, I'm afraid, didn't really get going at all off the line, and so he's now pulled off uh, into the parking area on the outside of, well, out of the way, uh, on the outside of Abbey. So the Mini is all pouring through. We've got amongst them, of course, the Mini Traveller. 21 is already beginning the Mini trend of old. Uh, which is to lose its wheel uh, wheel arch trim. That's Dave Edgecombe's car. And as they go, here's Adam Morgan. You can see why he's a bit of a touring car star, can't you? Uh, because, all right, he's got a, a quick car. Nick Swift uh, builds very quick minutes, but nonetheless, he's doing a great job up front going through... going through Cops Corner. Just slightly hesitating there because there was a mini getting out of shape there. That's the number 30 car. Was it number 30? Can't be number 30. We haven't got a number 30, but it's blue anyway. Back on the track now. You've got the leaders. We have, yes, and it's mini expert Ian Curley who's uh, caught up with the 76 car of Adam Morgan for the lead. So it's first and second, Morgan and Curley. And then next through is the uh, 142 in third place. Chris Morgan still holding on to that. Then number three, Chris Middlehurst. And it was Darren Turner who was the black and white car in fifth place that's made it up there. So two non specialist drivers up at the front. Non mini specialist drivers, absolutely. That's what so, I mean, yes. yes <laughs> so, side by side, in fact, changing places now. So uh, into the lead uh, has gone the, the red car of, of uh, Ian Curley as they go through Stoke Corner then. Adam Morgan in second place, fighting back. Massive understeer, that we didn't see which number it was as he uh, understeered his way through Stoke Corner. Darren, the uh, lead retaken by Adam Morgan into the corner. Second place is uh, Ian Curley in the red car. And in third place... Third place is not Chris Middlehurst, he's in fourth, isn't he? I think it's... Uh, well, we'll see as they go over the line. Here's, it's Chris Morgan, as uh, Alistair said. Uh, Chris Middlehurst is fourth, Darren Turner is fifth. In sixth place is number 18, Aaron Smith. And in seventh place, Patrick Watts, number 103. You got them back? I have, uh, and they're three abreast into Village, and uh, we're starting to see now the effect of uh, the slipstream because we're closing up the, the lead group. It's six cars for the lead at the moment, but it's still led by Adam Morgan, who's staying ahead of Ian Curley, who's been passed on the inside of the loop, but uh, gets back ahead again of Chris Morgan. Then it's Chris Middlehurst next up, who goes very wide, the uh, Kimi Raikkonen line from a couple of years ago, but thankfully gets back on the track safely. Right, so he's, uh, he's going to be able to make a break then, Adam Morgan. Uh, they're three abreast for third place coming into Brooklyn. Still second uh, is the red car of Ian Curley. 
number 40, but there's a lot of place shuffling going on for third. There's Chris Middlehurst in the green number three car. So has Adam Morgan made a break? I don't think so. He's going to have Ian Curley right there with him very soon. There's number 18 you can see on the screen there. That's Aaron Smith. Adam Morgan and Chris Morgan, no relation as far as I'm aware. Uh, Adam Morgan is his who leads. Tommy and Curley in the red car in second place. And Chris Morgan in the number 142 car in third place. But I don't think fourth will be the same as it was when you last time. Here they come. And they are, yes, and it's the uh, two white and black cars, and it's Chris Morgan, followed by Darren Turner, who's now up to fourth place. And Darren Turner s tries to slip through on the inside at Beckett, but uh, has to drop back behind. And behind Darren Turner is number three, Chris Middlehurst, so he's lost the place as they head off down through Chapel Curve and back onto the Hangar Straight. And I think we might have seven in the lead group very shortly. Well, we've certainly got five, uh, and uh, the sixth car is almost there. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, the leading group. Adam Morgan still leads that group. Then we've got a car that's trying to be part of the leading group, is well clear of the, the main pack, which is Jeff Smith, uh, number 18, Aaron Smith. Two white cars running side by side, the two leaders running side by side as they come into the left handed element of Club Corner, and Adam Morgan gets into there first ahead of Ian Curley. Chris Morgan running side by side with Darren Turner. Here, Darren Turner, number 81, who's now come through into third place. But Chris Morgan staying with him around the outside. No, Darren Turner through. So Darren Turner is now third. Rather different experience from racing an Aston Martin GT car, which is um, what Darren mainly does as far as racing goes. Come through Abbey. And there is that little bit of daylight opening up behind Adam Morgan's car. Alistair, what do you think? Yes, there is a little bit, but uh, that may all evaporate when they get onto the Wellington Strait, for example, where... Oh, and uh, going straight on was uh, number 76, uh, Adam Morgan. I don't know what happened there, whether he just left his braking a fraction too late, but he's dropped down into sixth place and off the lead group. Um, just seemed to go straight on at Village, across the grass and back onto the track. So now leading is 46 Ian Curley from 81 Darren Turner, from 142 Chris Morgan, 3 Chris Middlehurst, and then the maroon car, Aaron Smith, number 18, and then we get the erstwhile leader, Adam Morgan. What a strange mistake to make, but anyway, he's made it and he's dropped down the order, but no, no, he'll fight back. Darren Turner then has worked his way calmly through to the lead from starting on the third row in the number 81 car, the Aston Martin long time driver so ian curley still second it is going to be a bit of a, like a formula ford race in the sense of slipstream you don't want to lead on to the last lap but the last lap is still some way away just under nine minutes of the race remain that's a question of being in the right place at the start of the last lap but darren turner now begin to break away doing what adam morgan was doing earlier on as they come out of woodcut past the heritage pits darren turner leads ian curley is second chris morgan having a look on the inside line to Try and take second place away. And Chris Middlehurst joining in. And behind Chris Middlehurst, we have uh, number 18, Aaron Smith. And then we have the earlier leader, Adam Morgan. Well, it's all changed because Chris Middlehurst passed two cars going through Maggots into Beckett's, so he's up to second, chasing after Darren Turner, who uh, definitely has made a break. Uh, whether he can break the toe and, uh, and continue to pull away, we'll see. But uh, Darren Turner leads by uh, many, many mini car lengths. Yes, which is a long way, but I know what you mean, several mini car lengths, certainly he has. So Darren Turner now uh, edging away from the pursuing pack, headed by number three, Chris Middlehurst. Chris Morgan still third. Ian Curley, the one who's lost out on that lap. Oh, and he gets very, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't get alarmed by that. That's normal mini cornering. Uh, Ian Curley in fourth place. Leaders into Club Corner. And this breakaway movement by Darren Turner looks to be effective. He's opening up a margin. Seven and minutes and 20 seconds remain. Adam Morgan has recovered to one place. He's got back ahead of Aaron Smith in the number 18 car. Leaders heading up towards Abbey. And certainly Darren Turner's lead. It's going to be a difficult one. 
to be taken away by Chris Middlehurst. But Chris Middlehurst was showing great pace in qualifying yesterday until the CV joint failed. So he could well get back on terms with the leader. And uh, Chris Middlehurst uh, and Chris Morgan going with him. A little bit of a break between them and the fourth-placed car of Ian Curley. Then it's the recovering Adam Morgan, as you say, who's already made up a couple of places, and he's now on the back of that leading group again. So uh, there's every chance that Adam Morgan will make his way back towards the podium positions. So great recovery after that moment at Village a couple of laps ago. Yes, he is heading that way but still a bit of work to do in the remaining 6 minutes and 20 seconds. So Darren Turner into Brooklands. Adam Morgan trying to find a way around the red car, number 46, of Ian Curley. They're both right up behind Chris Morgan. But the leader, Darren Turner, looks to be almost impregnable now. But then strange things can happen in mini racing, as we are about to see probably. Ian Curley passed by Adam Morgan and also passes Chris Morgan. So that brings Adam Morgan back into... I think Chris Morgan's got a problem, hasn't he? Oh, but Darren Turner leading. Second is Chris Middlehurst. Third is Adam Morgan now, taking Ian Curley with him. And, yeah, I'm afraid that Chris Morgan's got a problem, number 142, having run so well with the leading group in the early part of the race. Five and a half minutes to go. They're back with you, Alistair into Beckett's once again and Darren Turner continues to hold that good lead over Chris Middlehurst and Adam Morgan now up onto that third spot of the podium but he's got Ian Curley right behind him then it's uh, Aaron Smith number 18 next up 75 Simon Evans his car parked on the side of the circuit I think something must have broken isn't it because it's actually uh, got stuck in the gravel but whatever happens with him, meanwhile, the leaders come down towards Stowe for the fifth time. Last time around, incidentally, Darren Turner, having hit the front, did the fastest lap of the race. Adam Morgan, with Ian Curley still shadowing him, as he has been through much of the race, whether it was when Adam was leading the race or now when he's fighting his way back towards the podium. They're side by side coming into club, and the green car just hangs on in front. And out of club, it's still just Adam Morgan in front. But over the line, Darren Turner leads with another new faster slap by 1.8 seconds from Chris Middlehurst. With Adam Morgan 30th, Curly 4th, Aaron Smith 5th. Michael Kane is coming into the picture now with aspiring partner Patrick Waltz. Michael Kane 6th, Patrick Waltz 7th. And Phil House has come from the middle of the grid. Phil, that's a mighty drive by Phil House. Former Monoposto Formula champion Phil and Volkswagen champion Phil House in eighth place now, number 115. That's a very impressive drive because he was way, way down the grid, much further back than I would have expected to find him. So Phil House very much coming into the reckoning now. The leaders through Aintree and uh, very much drying track now. Uh, very little spray from these uh, small tyres. And uh, it's Darren Turner who leads going down towards Brooklands, but uh, it looks to me as though Adam Morgan has shaken off for the moment the attentions of Ian Curley for that third, fourth place battle. Uh, yes, just about, perhaps. Through Luffield then, Darren Turner leads the way, his margin at the start of the lap, 1.8 seconds, another new fastest lap he set. Uh, of course, they can't, so they should slow down a little bit at Luffield at the moment because the car's Simon Evans and stuck in the gravel. But a heave over the marshals, and that car, I would have thought, would get back onto the track. A Scottish mini, you, tell, you can tell, from the uh, salt tower on the side of the car. Now, the challenge of a mini shouldn't be beyond the marshals, they reckon, but it may be, even a mini. Leaders going through Cops Corner and back up towards you. There's uh, 103, that's the car Patrick Watts with Michael Kane either just ahead or just behind him, and Philip House there close too. You've got the leaders at Beckett's. We have, yes, uh, yellow flag zone up here for something out at Chapel, and uh, leaders go through, no change of place, but uh, Adam Morgan has uh, seemed to have managed to pull away a little bit, so he's trying to chase after Chris Middlehurst, who in turn, of course, is chasing after Darren Turner as they go down the hangar straight. No, I think they probably reach what they're, the ultimate of what they can achieve now as they come onto hangar straight for the sixth time, and we'll have time for one more lap after this. 
So it's Darren Turner, Chris Biddlehurst, Adam Morgan, Ian Curley, Aaron Smith, Michael Caine, Patrick Waltz, Phil House. In ninth place is uh, 244 Tom Bell, who's often the front runner in these cars. And NF Owens, remember he started from the front of the grid, NF Owens was on pole position, but he's now in 10th place. Clearly all is not well with this car, I suspect. There's uh, 44 Michael Caine, who's now worked his way ahead of Aaron Smith. So Michael Caine now into fifth place. Through they go on to the last lap. Michael Caine in the... What sort of colour is that? Pale green, pastel shade of green. Michael's car. Chris Middlehurst now has the fastest lap in his attempt to close the gap down. He's succeeded to some extent. He's down to 1.2. It's 1.8 seconds first to second. He's now 1.2. Yes, visually you can see they're closer as they come into the loop. Darren Turner being uh, caught by Chris Middlehurst and uh, your man Phil House has made up another place. He's uh, uh, up at the back of that group, so he's in sixth place. And uh, he'll soon seven, seven, count. Sorry, seven. Yeah. Uh, next one to catch is going to be Aaron Smith, I think. That's correct, yes, and he's battling with Michael Caine, so uh, there's two there to be had if, uh, if he can make it. Well, certainly Chris Middlehurst is putting in a very strong challenge in the closing stages as Darren Turner clips the kerb there, hops onto three wheels, back onto four, uh, and come uh, a bit of sideways sliding there by Chris Middlehurst, who has been a Formula Ford champion in the past, Formula Ford 1600 champion, race winner in uh, the BRD Formula Ford championship as well, Chris Middlehurst, rather Andy, a very successful competitor in both modern and now historic racing. Uh, so very much a motor racing fan in the middle hurst. Darren Turner into Comp's corner with Chris Middlehurst closing up. But I don't think he's going to get close enough for the last part of the last lap. The two leaders back with you at Maggots, Alistair. Indeed, yes, both with headlights on. Third placed Adam Morgan is now well clear of Ian Curley, but uh, the two drivers ahead are quick enough to stay ahead of him. So those positions look fairly stable. Uh, Michael Caine has pulled away from uh, Aaron Smith and Smith, I think, will now come under attack from Phil House and Patrick Watts. And he is then onto the, onto the hangar straight for the final time. A bit of bonnet flapping going on on both the leading cars, I see, but into So Corner turns Darren Turner. There's the third, the second place car, number three of Chris Middlehurst. However late he breaks, he's not going to be able to get on turns with Darren, who flicks the tail of the car out nicely. Looks like he's been driving and racing minis all his life. And he comes out of the final corner, and Darren Turner wins the first part of the mini celebration trophy presented by Adrian Flux, because they can do it all again tomorrow. So he gets the chequered flag to win. Darren Turner will be very pleased with that. Chris Middlehurst, who's not exactly a mini expert, he's done more single-seater racing, but he has raced this many for the last couple of years. And on the last lap, Chris does the, the fastest lap of the race at 249.189. Adam Morgan is third after that moment that Alistair told us about. Uh, in fourth place, Ian Curley. Fifth, Michael Caine. Sixth, Aaron Smith. Seventh, Phil House. Uh, eighth, Tom Bell. Ninth, Endaf Owens, and tenth is Patrick Waltz. So Endaf Owens seems to get going again. Obviously, lost time with a big moment somewhere. But uh, entertaining from the entertainment for the minis. They, I think, possibly were spoken to by the clerk of the course before the race uh, and uh, asked to behave themselves. I think it's fair to say that they, they did. Uh, and because uh, one or two picked up penalties from the Transatlantic Trophy qualifying session yesterday. So the very large entry. Let's just see whether tell from the screen how many of that huge entry have actually got to the finish most of them have yes 56 cars started and only about six have not made it to the flag six or seven so 50 cars finishing the race is a pretty impressive outcome and they're all fit and ready to race again tomorrow We'll have them back in the pit lane shortly. Darren Turner, winner longer ago than he cared to remember of the 
McLaren Autosport BRD's Young Driver of the Year award back in the 1990s, on the back of which he became a test driver for McLaren, and then signed a contract to drive for Aston Martin in sports car racing, and he's been with them for something like 17 years. But with no previous known history of racing a Mini, he's done it right this time. And that's a Morris, isn't it, Darren's car? Yeah, Morris Cooper S. Tell by the grill on the badge. So confirmation of the result there. First, Darren Turner. In the Mor in fact, Morris Cooper S. is finishing in the third, third top three places, which for somebody who used to own a Morris Cooper S. I find very satisfying. Uh, Darren Turner first, number 81. Second, number three, Chris Middlehurst. Third, number 76, Adam Morgan. Fourth, the first of the Austin Cooper S's, Ian Curley. Uh, fifth, Michael Kane, number 44. Sixth, Aaron Smith, number 18. Seventh, number 115, Phil House. Eighth, number 244, Tom Bell. Ninth, number 20, Endaf Owens. And tenth, number 103, Patrick Watts. Eleventh, number 101, Stephen Woodrow. Twelfth, uh, number 45, David Ogden. Thirteenth, number 88, Nick Paddy. Fourteenth, Barry Syme. Number 25, fifteenth, Graham Churchill. Sixteenth, number five, Lars Ekornes, who had a moment early on. Se uh, 17th, number 117, Ben Hatton. 18th, number 711, Dan Lewis. And that's as far as I can take them. Well, I can actually go on to another side. Tim Stanbridge was eight, uh, 19th. And 20th was number 29. And that was Robert Spencer. Right, Andrew's probably in the pit lane. Maybe able to grab a word with a delighted Darren. <laughs> Great happiness down there. Andrew? Can you yes, grab a indeed. Moment? Uh, Darren in his full Aston Martin gear here, just uh, embracing all the team and uh, get his crash helmet off in a second. Well, and uh, the hands device comes off. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, all the congratulations. Fantastic. I didn't know you were a mini racer. I didn't, th didn't know myself, but um, after that, yeah, what a joy to be out there racing. I mean, big grid of minis. Um, fantastic because the conditions were changing all the time and um, just sort of plucked away until I got in the lead. But I don't know who came second. I know it was a green car, but um, yeah, definitely another lap, lap or two. And, and well, that, was, been... that was Chris Middlehurst. But yeah. I mean, it, it was a typical mini racing that you would have seen 40 years ago. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, it was good, really good fun. I like the changing conditions. And uh, yeah, this car was fantastic to drive. Yeah. So uh, it... great job by Raceworks and everyone else. It did dry out quite a lot, didn't it, Darren? Yeah, there was patches which were dry line near enough. And then there was other bits that are still damp. So as you came down from, um, from Stowe into Vale, still quite damp through there. But other parts of the track was pretty dry. So uh, yeah, really good fun, loved it. So four days ago, presumably you were testing at Barcelona with the Aston, were you? Uh, yeah, we're down in uh, Barcelona for the prologue for WC, so completely different weather <laughs> conditions down there. Beautiful blue skies and uh, very hot track temperatures, but yeah, completely different type of driving altogether. Well done. Off to the podium for Darren Turner. What a good job. Celebration of minis this weekend for the Silverstone Classic and what a way to get that celebration underway on the racetrack with the mini celebration trophy presented by Adrian Flux. Drivers onto the podium, they'll be presented, delighted to say we have the president of the BRDC here, synonymous with the brand of mini Paddy Hopkirk will make the presentation in a couple of moments. Welcome Paddy, lovely to have you here. Let's get the drivers on the podium in reverse order. In third place, number 76, Adam Morgan. Current BTCC driver and race winner. Good to have you here, Adam. Well done. Congratulations. In second place, number three, Chris Middlehurst. Well done, Chris. Congratulations. And on the top step of the podium, not known for mini racing, but did rather well today, number 81, Darren Turner. Well done, Darren. Gets a nice cheer from the crowd as well. And Paddy, would you like to step forward and make the presentation over at the far end of the podium? First of all, to third place, Adam Morgan, who's uh, not only got a cap, he's also got an Adrian Flux goodie bag. Um, I wonder what's in the goodie bag. And a third place silver trophy as well, okay, along with a couple of words from Paddy. And then down to this end where Chris Middlehurst is standing by for Paddy's presentation. The Masters cap, the Adrian Flux goodie bag and the second place trophy. And a handshake from Paddy. And then on to our winner on the top step of the podium, about to receive a Masters cap. 
an Adrian Flux goodie bag and a garland around the neck of our victor. Well done, Darren. Congratulations. There's the goodie bag as well. And <laughs> Paddy lifts up the very large winner's trophy and presents it to Darren Turner. Well done, Darren. Thank you, Paddy, for making the presentation. I've got a question from Paddy for Darren in a couple of moments. Now, if we can have all three drivers bunch up together on the top step of the podium so we have a nice shot of you with your trophies and all on the top step of the podium. There we go. They sort their caps out. And there's the very big trophy for Darren Turner. And they smile for the cameras. The cameras click away. And what a treat we get when we have the minis racing with us. Fantastic stuff. Well done, guys. Congratulations. Let's have a quick word with Darren Turner. I know you just spoke to Andrew down in the pit lane, but Paddy was asking me, how much brake horsepower do you have in that little car? I wasn't sure. So Chris, I think, answered the uh, question. It's like over 100 horses, I think, right. at the wheels, maybe, okay. whatever that means. Not what you're used to when you're racing. Uh, no, we've normally got a bit more horsepower, but it's all at the rear, not at the front. So um, it's a bit tricky to, to understand where the, the grip level is. And with all these cars around you, it was so much fun. Those first sort of three, four laps were just fantastic fun. During, during qualifying yesterday, there were some drivers that were coming up to me that have been doing mini racing for years and years, saying, Darren Turner's a bit quick, isn't he? Yeah, I think it's, there's no brakes on these cars, so it's, I don't want to be, you know, barreling into corners left, right and centre. And, uh, you know, at the beginning of that race, I was just trying to sort of keep out of trouble. Um, it got quite feisty in a few, a few moments, but it was just great fun to watch. You know, the angle these cars get through the corners, um, you know, it was one of those things where you're sort of grinning behind the, the crash helmet and just enjoying the spectacle of it all, let alone being part of, of the race itself. Did you hear what he just said, everybody? He won the race and he said it was great fun to watch. So uh, it was for us as well. Good. I mean, the only bit I wasn't enjoying was when Chris was gaining on the last few laps. Yeah. I was thinking, I don't know how long this race is, but I'll just keep going and hopefully uh, we'll run out and the checker flag will be out soon. Well done, Darren. Many congratulations. I'm going to talk to Chris about those last couple of laps. The camera's over there, so uh, look to the front if you would, please, Chris. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the last couple of laps, they were interesting. You needed a few more. Absolutely, yeah. I was just closing in on Darren there in the end and uh, try to keep it clean and on the circuit. But yeah, absolutely crazy race. 60 minis out there uh, in the absolute element out there. So big thanks to Swift Tune Engineering for giving me the great car and great engine. And uh, yeah, Swift Tune 1, 2, 3 there in the end. So fantastic. They just make for superb racing, don't they? Absolutely, yeah. So close, so evenly matched. Um, the first lap was very hectic, but yeah, kept it on and uh, yeah, pulled through for second. So yeah, well absolutely. Done, Chris. Well done, Chris. Many congratulations. Adam Morgan, finally, we'll talk to him. Um, why weren't you on the top step then, Adam? I got a bit carried away. <laughs> uh, I saw a bit of a gap behind me, and I thought, right, this is the lap I need to go. And uh, should have realised, it doesn't matter if I was six car lengths ahead, the toe is just incredible on these things. And unfortunately, schoolboy area locked up into turn three and went straight on. And uh, I think Darren was hoping the race would end quickly, and I was hoping it would go on for longer. But... Uh, just, just a great fun, you know, a smile from here to here. So massive thank you to Swift Tune Engineering. Can't wait for tomorrow. Super stuff. Thank you, guys. Well done. Great race. Fantastic. That's a mini celebration trophy race presented by Adrian Flux. And the trophies presented by the president of the BRDC, synonymous with mini, Paddy Hopkirk.